Hello and welcome to the workshop on Encyclopedia software at the Galaxy Community Conference 2021. In this workshop, Emma Leith from the Galaxy P team will cover the Encyclopedia workflow for data independent acquisition analysis. I am Pratik Jagtap and I am here to offer an overview on data independent acquisition in general and the software Encyclopedia in particular. This software was developed by Brian Searle when he was at the University of Washington and was implemented in Galaxy by James Johnson from Minnesota Supercomputing Institute. We'll have a short interview with James Johnson, also known as JJ, on the benefits of using Encyclopedia through Galaxy. In traditional data dependent acquisition, also called as DDA, a proteomic sample is digested into peptides, ionized, and then analyzed by mass spectrometry. Peptides with precursor intensities above the noise threshold are selected for fragmentation, thus generating tandem mass spectra, termed as MSMS spectra. These MSMS spectra can be matched to peptide sequences in a database. Although this approach is powerful due to stochastic nature of data acquisition during mass spectrometry, the mass spectrometer samples for peptides for fragmentation with a bias towards those with the strongest signal. Thus, DDA presents a challenge in reproducibly quantifying low abundance peptides. On the other hand, Data independent acquisition, also called as DI for short, all peptides within a defined mass range are subjected to fragmentation. And this analysis is repeated over the full mass to charge range. This results in accurate peptide quantification without a bias towards predefined peptides of interest. If you see in this figure, DIMS continuously collects fragment ion intensities for all eluting peptides by using wider isolation windows, such as 10 Daltons. All the ions within this comparatively wide isolation window are isolated and simultaneously fragmented. Shown here is the schedule of MS1 spectra in black and the isolation windows of MS2 spectra in red. The simultaneous isolation and fragmentation of the multiple peptides results in a complex MS2 spectrum consisting of ions from all isolated peptides. Fragmentation intensities along with the MS intensities can be used for quantification. This is possible since MS2 ion intensity is available throughout the entire elution profile. As a result, data independent acquisition provides a broader dynamic range in quantification and improved reproducibility for identification as well as quantification. And this also results in lesser missing values, which is extremely valuable for st statistical analysis and also a better sensitivity and accuracy for quantification. For example, if you observe here, uh, a peptide shown in red might not get detected by data dependent acquisition, but might get detected because of the approach taken by data independent acquisition. Due to the complexity of the data, particularly ion information from multiple peptides and the need to pass out quantitative information from the continuous data acquisition across the elution profile, many bioinformatic tools have been developed. Software tools for implementing DI data analysis can be broadly divided into two classes, depending on the need for a spectral library or library free approaches. These include software such as OpenSwath, Spectronaut, Encyclopedia, DINN, DI Umpire, and PCAN. 
for a more comprehensive and current understanding of the status of bioinformatics for di analysis readers are recommended to read the following manuscripts and video materials turning our attention to encyclopedia software this software was developed in mike mccoy's lab by brian sol and here is the recommended acquisition strategy for chromatogram library data collection as a start experiment groups shown here in orange and blue and this could be control and disease or any other two conditions that one would like to compare these these orange and blue samples are pooled and then they are run using the gas phase fractionated di analysis after at least six injections of the same matrix to ensure consistent chromatography within the gpf runs next a chromatogram library is generated from the pool samples and lastly used to interpret quantitative results for each biological replicate so the inputs that are required for encyclopedia workflow are a protein fasta file a spectral library and this could be generated from your data dependent acquisition data a gas phase fractionated di data using narrow windows and this goes into encyclopedia so that it can generate a chromatogram library which is used as a template by the experimental di data to offer an output of proteins and peptides and its quantitative uh, associated quantitative data one of the variation of this that has been recently introduced is instead of using the dda library or the library uh, spectral library generated from dda data one can also use a protein fasta file and subject it to deep learning based proset software which basically gives you a predicted peptide library which has got predicted fragmentation as well as predicted range and time amongst other features which now can be used as a template or as an input into encyclopedia so you have your protein fasta file a predicted peptide library generated from this protein fasta file the gas phase fractionated di data that goes into encyclopedia so that it can be used um, to generate the chromatogram library this is the approach that we will be discussing in this tutorial for more information about encyclopedia readers are recommended to visit the following website or read manuscripts and video materials the data set used in this tutorial is a mixture of proteins from t4 bacteriophage infecting its host e coli as well as non host species such as salmonella typhimurium and bacillus subtilis this data set will be referred to as the iprg data set throughout the workshop since dda data set of these samples was used for the proteomics informatics groups also called as iprg meta proteomics study of 2020 this resulted in generation of a protein fasta file the proset generated spectral library that i that we discussed earlier six gas phase fractionated raw files and four biological replicates of bacteriophage infected samples lastly we would like to acknowledge some of the researchers who have uh, been instrumental in making this uh, tutorial possible we would like to start with susan weintrop from University of Texas uh, from San Antonio. She was generous enough to provide us with the data set uh, that we have used as an input data set here. Secondly, we'd like to thank uh, Brian Sir, uh, who is currently at Ohio State University, um, and uh, his inputs on implementing this uh, software that he has developed into Galaxy have been very, very important. we'd also like to thank matt chambers who helped us to implement ms convert into galaxy so that raw files could be converted into appropriate format using appropriate parameters 
We'd like also like to thank uh, Tim Griffin, Subina Mehta for their help in making this tutorial possible, and Emma Leith who has worked extensively on making uh, this tutorial. Lastly, we'd like to thank James Johnson from Minnesota Supercomputing Institute and also support by Saskia Hiltman and Beyond Grinning from Galaxy Europe. Now we will have a short interview with James Johnson from the University of Minnesota. He is a senior developer at the Minnesota Supercomputing Institute and we'll ask him about the benefits of using Encyclopedia in Galaxy as well as the challenges that he faced while implementing Encyclopedia in Galaxy. So we have uh, James Johnson, who is a senior developer at uh, Minnesota Supercomputing Institute. Uh, hello, JJ. Hello. Uh, so JJ, uh, as we are aware, we are talking about the Encyclopedia uh, implementation within Galaxy um, as part of this uh, tutorial. Uh, I had a question to maybe if you can give us some developer's perspective. Um, on, on, on this implementation. So the question I had was, you're aware that there is a desktop ap application for Encyclopedia that is available for users. Uh, I just wanted to get your opinion on what is the advantage of using Encyclopedia within Galaxy? Well, the desktop application is very convenient for somebody that is running a single application that's not too large so that it'll actually fit on there personal computer. But the advantages Galaxy gives is that it allows you to scale up your work and it allows it to integrate into other things that you do. So let's consider scaling first. If you have a lot of large uh, files that you are going to process with Encyclopedia, you would have to move them all to your personal computer that you're running the desktop application on and that you would have to run them one at a time and wait through and click things at the appropriate time to make the application work. Um, most of us, once we get our process down, would like it to be more automatic than that, and Galaxy provides that. So one could just submit multiple jobs at the same time and let Galaxy run them wherever and whenever it can with as much memory uh, disk space as it needs. The second aspect that we mentioned is uh, Galaxy provides a nice integration with other applications that you might run. So for instance, in processing encyclopedia data, usually you need to convert the files first from the raw format coming from the sequencer, uh, excuse me, the mass spectrometer, and, uh, and then uh, get them in the right format. So then they're ready for Galaxy, which is good, or for Encyclopedia, which is going to have to run a couple different stages. First of all, it needs to generate a spectral library. And then second of all, it'll have to run the searches on the individual um, data sets uh, in search for peptides and proteins. Right. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see a lot more advantages wherein you can basically start with the mass spec data and then have your results uh, without having to transfer your data, you know, within various machines or applications. So that, that sounds great. Uh, the other question I have, I mean, you have implemented quite a few software tools within Galaxy. Um, what were the major challenges that you faced to have Encyclopedia in particular implemented in Galaxy? Well, first I'm going to provide a little compliment to the application developer. Um, often when people make desktop tools, they make assumptions about how the code will be run. And, um, and in doing that, sometimes the person will intermix the code for the uh, user interface and the actual computation. And in this case, Encyclopedia has a nice clean break between the computation code 
and how you access it either through the desktop graphical user interface or via command line. So that made it pretty easy for this to be run as a command line application in Galaxy. Uh, the second thing the developer did was not make the assumption that only one user running one application at a time was going to use this. That often happens again with desktop applications, often manipulating user preferences every time somebody runs something, which of course in Galaxy, if you're submitting 100 jobs simultaneously, they can't all be trying to manipulate that same common file. So all of this is kept separate in Encyclopedia, which is great. Um, however, it did take some effort to try to figure out how Encyclopedia actually goes about conducting a workflow if you use the desktop application. Um, when you do that, you give it multiple files um, and you click on the search to search the lab function, I believe. And then later you give it some other files and say, go ahead and search for my proteins and uh, within that, uh, making use of that spectral library. What you don't see, or what I couldn't see looking at the command line interface was the assumptions that are in the desktop application about how files are named, what intermediate files need to be kept between stages of, of the process. Um, so that took me a while to discover that both by talking with the developer and also by inspecting the, the desktop application code very carefully. Um, and then, you know, one other aspect that comes up, of course, is with a new application, there are new data formats that have to be passed between applications. So that involved um, adding a couple special spectral library data types to Galaxy. Uh, in this case, one's called DLib, which is a spectral library um, that is used from the uh, search to lib aspect of gas fractionated files. And then finally, uh, when you do the uh, final protein search, it will produce a elib, which is an expansion of the DLib file. Um, so it was important to include these as new data types within Galaxy so it could uh, handle the transition between um, various application tools within Galaxy. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, uh, JJ, for giving a perspective, a developer's perspective into, uh, into you know, the, the encyclopedia workflow as such. And uh, as a user of Galaxy, I would really like to thank you for doing that. And I'm sure, you know, users who are going to use this in this uh, workshop will, uh, will hopefully uh, appreciate the work that you've done into this. Uh, so let's move on to Emma, who will now take us on to um, using this particular encyclopedia tool uh, within Galaxy. Thanks, Gigi. 